Welcome everybody to Very Important Geeks, where today we are going to be geeking out about the Kedis NJ68 with special guest from Astro. So this review is gonna be more like a first impressions review. I haven't had it for that long. I've only had it for about a week now and I've used it for work, for casual surfing the internet. So take that with a grain of salt. Now let's take a look at what we get in the box. So first of all, you'll notice that you'll get some instructions in English, which is always handy. You get the keyboard itself wrapped in plastic. And as you can see, I got the black colorway there. Further inside the box, you'll find an all metal keycap puller, USB-C to USB-A cable, instructions in Mandarin, a switch puller, and a cable tie. And you'll notice that there is a lack of extra Mac keys, which I'll get to in a second. Now let's take a look at the Drop Skylight keycap series. I got the 108 key version in the Valiant colorway. It comes in two trays, and the first tray is gonna have all of your main keyboard keys, and the second tray is gonna have your extra function keys. So the key to NJ68, as its name means, has 68 keys, so it's a 65% layout keyboard, meaning it has an extra column and dedicated arrow keys. I got this from AliExpress for about $120, and it took about a month to get here. Now that's given COVID and everything else, but generally it is shipping from China, so shipping times may vary. Now this keyboard comes in two colorways, black and white. And for whatever reason, only the white version comes with the Mac extra keycaps. The black one does not. So I've had to supplement them here with some extra keycaps that I had from the Keychron K6, which uh, I have a whole video about over here. Now, I don't know why Keydisk does this. I don't think there's any reason that colorway should be the deciding factor of whether or not you get the extra keycaps. It's not like everybody who owns a Mac just wants a white keycap set and white keyboard. I know I don't, but um, very weird decision still. The keycaps that it does come with are OEM profile and their die sub PBT. So they're not gonna be like ABS and get oily and slick over time. And they're gonna have a little bit of texture to them. Even though I did get the RGB backlit version of the keyboard, the keycaps that it comes with are not backlit, they're not see-through, so no light is gonna shine out of those legends. And that's also gonna be true if you get the white colorway. Now the extra keycaps that they do give you are gonna be orange in color, and from what I read and what I can see online, the RGB light actually bleeds through the orange keycap material on the sides a bit in an undesirable kind of way. The NJ68 is hot swappable and programmable, and I got this with just the stock kale browns. Although because it is hot swappable, you can use any switch you want. It supports three and five pin configurations. Out of the box, I'm pretty satisfied with the performance. The switches come pre-lubed, the stabilizers don't rattle. Uh, it's very satisfying, very smooth, not scratchy at all. And I got the Kale Browns because they're not super loud, but there's a nice sort of rounded, soft, tactile bump that's just enough to give me what I'm looking for. I don't necessarily want the clackiest of switches, but if that's what you're looking for, you can definitely just switch them up. And if you're interested in what the stock keycaps plus Kale Brown switches sound like, time for the all important Journey Sound Test. The case itself is just gonna be ABS plastic, but it does seem like it's one piece except for the back here, which you can pop off. Uh, it does feel very sturdy, minimal flex, not a lot of rattling, not a lot of reverb when you're hitting the keys either. And one of the big pluses for me is that it does work wired and wireless over Bluetooth 4.1. And because it does support Bluetooth, it's got a 2500 milliamp hour battery and it can pair up to three devices at one time. 
Once you hook up the included USB-C cable to this, you will be able to use it. If you want to use it in Bluetooth mode, you have to turn on the Bluetooth mode first, so don't forget to do that. Out of the box, the Bluetooth worked just fine for me. I was able to pair it up with my Mac Mini, no problem. Now, while I don't think this looks bad out of the box, the black keycaps and the whole black colorway, not my personal preference. I want just a little bit more personality out of it, which is why I got the extra keycap set from drop.com. This is going to be uh, the drop skylight keycaps in the Valiant colorway. I'll drop a link to everything that I use below, both the Drop Skylight keycap set and the Kitas NJ68. And boy, doesn't a good keycap set just add that little much more personality to a keyboard? Isn't that really all why we're in this hobby anyway, of just how personalized it can be, how it really represents who we are? I mean, this keyboard is basically me, a little bit of a Frankenstein and red and black. Like, ooh. So first impressions. 65% is my sweet spot for keyboards. Love the dedicated arrow keys, love that it's Bluetooth, love that it's Mac compatible. Don't like that the keycaps for the Mac don't come in the black version and only the white version. I see no reason why that needs to be the case. So Kitas, maybe something to think about. Now, because it is RGB lit, and if you do want to support Mac, finding a keycap set that'll work might be a little difficult, but not impossible. Um, even if you have to like mix them up a little bit, that's probably okay. Now, compared to the RGB lights on the other keyboards that I have, the Keychron K6, the Ducky12 SF RGB, the animation is not as smooth on the NJ68. It does have an obvious stutter to it. Not too bad, but you can definitely notice a difference between the two. Uh, it's not something that would be a no-go for me, just something to keep in mind. I would have liked to have seen an aluminum case, but this ABS plastic isn't bad at all. Another thing that I wish it did, instead of the switch being on the bottom, I wish it were on the side. It's a very minor annoyance, but annoyance nonetheless if I'm picking it up all the time and switching it off just to conserve battery. For $120, I think it's a very reasonable price. It's not the cheapest that you can get in this segment, but you are talking about RGB backlighting, you're talking about hot swaps, uh, you're talking about Bluetooth, and you're talking about Mac compatibility, so definitely not bad. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Let me know in the comments what you think. A like and a sub is always appreciated and consider supporting me on Patreon. And until next time, geek out. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere.